all states, democracies and dictatorships are held together by a social contract, the often unspoken understanding between the people and the government that sets out minimum mutual responsibilities, which allow the state to impose its will. Now, I appreciate that social contract might be as brutal as if the people obey, the government will not kill them, or as abstract as if the government is legitimately elected, the people have a duty of submission. I, I invite you to correct me if I'm mistaken, but my sense is that China's social contract has historically been based on a kind of practical bargain, that if the government provides for the people's essential needs, the people will accept even an, an undemocratic political system. And those needs seem to me to include things like social stability, dignity on the international stage, and especially a reasonable and rising standard of living. If Xi Jinping is now prioritizing his political interests over his country's economic interest, is it possible that he is doing the one thing most likely to undermine China's prosperity and therefore his own administration? If the Chinese economy falters as a result of Xi's politics of centralization, is there a possibility that the people of China will feel that the social contract has been broken and therefore be more likely to resist the state's authority? I suppose if I were to put it in somewhat imperial and medieval terms, mm -hmm. by putting himself at the center of the Chinese cosmos, might she forfeit the mandate of heaven and collapse the state <laughs> apparatus on himself? Right. I, I, I appreciate this um, classic uh, medieval um, uh, veil uh, or overarching theme uh, to this question. Um, so it, let me just begin with you, the first part of of, of your 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 your, uh, your analysis there. You know the social contract and to what extent the social contract have have changed through the uh, through China's you know the forty plus years of reform and open up. I would agree with you, Akash, there in the sense that uh, I do think the social the social contract between the people and uh, um, and, and the party state. Um, I have changed, uh, especially during Xi Jinping's first two term. And a lot of these change probably are also due to circumstances. And I'll explain why. So the, uh, the grand bargain struck by Deng Xiaoping between the party and the people, that was, that was in the context of the end of a 10 year chaotic cultural revolution. That was a very chaotic period and people who lived through the, those, that, that era had not found the memory of it, right? And there are a lot of uh, novels and movies about it and I encourage everybody to check it out. And uh, coming out of those 10 years, so the Deng Xiaoping and or the party struck the social contract struck between the party and the people is that well now we are going to focus on economic development and by doing that the premises was to let a small group of people who can or who are capable or who are entrepreneurship who are entrepreneurial enough let those smaller group to get rich with the hope that this can sort of trickle down and um, make the rest of the Chinese society become prosperous. So in many ways, this is very much like, you know, Reagan style, right? It's like uh, tri triple down economics and type of things. Um, but increasingly, when, especially after uh, the global financial crisis, not immediately, but after the ramifications to, of the global financial crisis to China, it took a, a little bit longer to fully express itself. And by Xi Jinping ascended to power in 2012, that at that time, the Chinese economy was already not in a good shape. And the era of double digit growth was no longer, was already uh, in the past. So at that time, China was also increasingly faced not just a, a change or a slowing down economy. There was also environmental problem. There was also, uh, there was also increasingly demographic changes 
in the society. And therefore, throughout Xi Jinping's first two term, he increasingly become, or his policy increasingly uh, stepped or overreached beyond economic activities and into the territory of social and even family issues. And I'll give you two examples. The first example is Xi Jinping himself. At, during his first term, he gave um, he gave us a special special talk about the importance of Chinese youth health. And in that discussion, he specifically talked about um, why there are so many Chinese uh, children um, getting like wearing glasses and become ne uh, nearsighted. So that and, and that speech immediately after his talk, the stock price of uh, several Chinese game companies, including Tencent, tumbled. And the connection there is that in a different occasion, apparently he talked about Chinese youth spend too much time playing computer games and that hurt the, the hurt their eyesight and therefore you know there should be something should be done. <laughs> so that's that's one small example just to show a lot of these you know when people talk about Xi Jinping's China becoming a nanny state, it expressed in his attention to these details. Now one way to interpret that is yes you know Uncle Xi as a lot of Chinese people describe it, Uncle Xi really cares about the Chinese people. But then the other way to talk about it is there is this over overreach or stepping into people's uh, family and uh, personal issue. And then the other example that I'm going to give is the transformation from one child policy to two child and then now it's a three child policy. And uh, there are active government policies encouraging families to uh, give, give birth to not just one child, but and not just two child, but just three children. And there are also, there are also steps to prevent women uh, from uh, getting abortion. And there are also steps trying to make sure that uh, families, once they get married, there are systematic steps to make sure that they are already starting their, their, their consideration of, of family planning and getting ready to get a kid and all that. So a lot of these social and family issues are also are, are, are expression of you know the, the, the change of the social contract. It used to be the case that let's just focus on developing the economy. But right now, the dynamic changed a little bit. Instead of uh, focusing on economy, there are a lot of other societal issues being done. And then finally, I'll just conclude by saying that um, Xi Jinping also put a lot of emphasis on the so-called the classic Chinese traditions, which include a, a huge emphasis on educating classic Chinese literature and de-emphasizing the English education. And there is also the pro high promote, putting a high uh, priority of pro uh, promoting Chinese herbal medicine and uh, classic Chinese, uh, in Chinese, you would call it like a zhong yi, like Chinese classic herbal, uh, herbal medicine and uh, traditional Chinese medication practice. So the emphasis on classic Chinese traditions and uh, making, uh, in, in, rather than, and, and be suspicious or, or at least suspect, uh, skeptical of Western culture and Western influence, that's another kind of uh, uh, divergent from the social contract because it used to be the case by focusing on economy it's a welcoming of western culture western thinking and recognizing that yes when you're opening up when you open up the window one or two flies are going to come in and you know we are going to live with it that was the Deng Xiaoping era but now the new social contract is we are going to be skeptical so I'll just end there <laughs>